I am so excited to bring you today's episode with a friend of mine, Alexa Rabini, who is a certified integrative animal caregiver and devoted hashtag pug mom who is on a mission to revolutionize the way we care for our pets. In today's episode, Alexa shares her powerful journey driven by personal experiences that ignited her passion for mindful parenting and exposed the harsh realities of the pet industry. Through heart-wrenching encounters with veterinarians who failed her dogs, including a devastating misdiagnosis that led to the loss of her childhood dog, Alexa realized the importance of proactive and informed pet health care. This pivotal moment propelled her into a quest to ensure that no pet parent has to face premature goodbyes. As Alexa delves into her studies in animal caregiving, she uncovers alarming instances of abuse, fraud, and neglect within the industry. This eye-opening revelation fuels her determination to educate and empower pet owners. Mindful Dog Mom is the platform Alexa has created for serious dog owners who share her unwavering commitment to improving their furry friends' lives. In this episode, she imparts invaluable insights and strategies for proactive pet care, shedding light on an alternative approach and dispelling industry myths. Tune in as we embark on a transformative conversation with Alexa Rabini, where her personal journey, expertise, and passion converge to empower you as a dedicated dog owner. Get ready to embrace a new paradigm of pet parenting and discover how you can make a positive impact on your beloved companion's life. <coughs> Have you tried training methods that just didn't work? Do you feel that your pet is not getting his or her nutritional needs met? Are illnesses and bad behavior your daily norm? You're going to want to join me on the Pet Parenting Reset, where you'll hear interesting and informative interviews and get solutions to all your pet problems. I'm your host, Jessica L. Fisher. Well, thank you so much for joining me, Alexa. I was, I, okay, here's the thing. I met you briefly at Super Zoo last year. And I know I told Billy when I had him on the podcast, I'm like, I am so sorry. Like, I am just a horrible, horrible, I am such an introvert that like, I don't even know how to talk to people in person. And I'm just like, I totally shut down and I'm like, I'm so, I'm just like, I've been on an apology tour since Super Zoo. <laughs> um, so I know exactly how you feel. Yeah. I'm like, and my, of course my husband is such an extrovert and he's like, go talk, go, go talk, go talk and take pictures and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, no, I can't do it. <laughs> so, um, part of my apology tour <laughs> for being such an introvert um in person i just i'm i'm so bad at it and and i apologize but it was nice to meet you and i um see your stuff on line and so i thought it would be really cool to just kind of introduce what you're doing to my audience um because i know you're local to las vegas but then you also have like an online platform with mindful dog mom. So um, before we talk about all of that, how did you like, what, what happened? Cause something happens to everybody <laughs> that puts them in the pet space where they're like, this is what I'm doing with my life. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I became a pug mom with Lily here back in 2013 after losing my childhood dog. Um, she unfortunately was misdiagnosed by a conventional veterinarian. And by the time we finally figured out what was going on, it was too late. She died on the operating table. And I've never seen a dent because he was a dentist specialist because like it was the like bacteria in her jaw, like eating away her jaw. So we had to like, oh, especially like go in there. I mean, this was years ago, so I 
I don't remember exactly, but he was, he was upset and crying and cause he had never lost a patient before on the table. And that's what taught me that if we're proactive with our pet's care, then we can prevent things like that from happening. So when I adopted Lily, I just became obsessed with making sure that she lived the best life possible and discovered out of the blue, just on Facebook, Rodney's page, and just started digging down that rabbit hole <laughs> of how to make pet lives better. And and slowly but surely, as I was pet sitting professionally, um, Rover.com just started killing dogs left and right, losing dogs left and right. And I just kept seeing, kept seeing the abuse, the fraud, and the neglect happening. And I was like, what if I spread the awareness here locally in Las Vegas? I don't even care about reaching anybody nationally. Just spread the awareness about how we can make pet lives better in general. And that's how Mindful Dog Mom came to life. Wow. I mean, it's always sad to hear like what has happened in people's lives that led them down the path they're on, but also like really grateful in, in, in the same breath, right? Like that it did lead you where, where you are today. Cause Oh Lord knows I've been through quite a few things with quite a few pets. And it is like, I, I obviously cannot imagine what it would be like to be a veterinary surgeon and be on the table and lose a patient. Um, I will say that like, I have had a pet in that same situation that died on the operating table. And fortunately it was a specialist who was doing the operation. And my regular vet was there because she was doing it in my regular vet's office. And my regular vet like shook some sense into her and was like, we got to keep because they resuscitated him. And then, then the, the surgeon didn't want to complete the surgery because she was so freaked out about everything that had happened. And so my, my vet was like, you've got to do this or it doesn't matter. Like if you don't do this, he's going to die anyway. Like why did we bring him back? (laughs) That I can't imagine the, like, I can't imagine the feelings because literally last night we were watching a special on 60 minutes, well, a clip from 60 minutes. Cause I, I can't watch 60 minutes, but, um, it was about, how dogs that have cancer are literally changing cancer treatment for humans because they, it's basically the exact same thing in dogs and humans. And so the treatments are the same and the dog ended up dying. And I, I was just like, ball, it it was a 10 minute segment. And I'm like on the couch bawling my eyes out over a dog I have never met (laughs) and had known for 30 seconds. I can't imagine, (laughs) but, um, so it led you to, so you're a professional pet sitter. You're still doing that? I have since since retired. Um, right. I went back to my original (laughs) job. Um, I work in the music industry. I I always have. And some reason during COVID they pulled me in and now I'm basically running the entertainment at my live music venue. (laughs) So that's, that's my day job, but my, well, I, I more so say that's my night job. And then my day job is taking care of these guys. Yeah. (laughs) Oh, you're so sweet. Oh my goodness. So, okay. That makes sense because I just had Isabel, uh, you know, Isabel from Covered in Pet Hair on, and she also um, shut down her pet setting operation during COVID because she was like, I can't make this work anymore. Right. Like it doesn't make sense anymore. So I get it. Like that makes sense. Um, and so many people are working from home after the fact now that it still doesn't make sense for a lot of people to go back. Uh, if you're, if that's your full-time job. Right. Um, but I'm sure you learned a lot doing professional pet sitting and that helps fuel (laughs) mindful dog mom. And then you also have Vegas dog moms, which is kind of like a little fun thing on the side. Is that, (laughs) Yeah, so I have two programs that are part of Mindful Dog Mom. Vegas Dog Moms is my program for pet parents where I help educate the public. And that's where where I also stop pet sitting. It's not that I didn't love pet sitting. I just am so much more passionate about education that I wanted to take it to the next level. Um, That's why I went back to 
my original day job. That way I could spend my free time on this passion project. And then the secondary program is Possum Professionals, where I I rally all together the licensed, insured, and bonded pet professionals of Las Vegas. And we have a whole directory now. Originally, this idea started as a mobile app, and I even like showed it to Rodney and everybody at SuperZoo back in the day. Um, but instead of becoming a mobile app, I decided to focus on a website. That way, people who aren't tech savvy and don't want mobile apps on their phones can still access it in general. And I, what's different about me is I, I interview the business. I use their services if possible. And I do a full background check. It's not just, oh, let's look at their Yelp reviews. I'm actually making sure that this person is truly someone that I would trust with my own pets in order to refer out to them. And I'm, I'm not taking a fee like Rover. They charge a fee to the client, then they charge a fee to the pet sitter and take a portion of their profits. I don't care about that. I just want to make sure that the pets of Las Vegas are staying in safe hands because that's what Rover is teaching you, that anybody can just pet sit for a dog. And it's there's so much more to that when it comes to pet sitting. I know. I have never, ever trusted Rover. Like, so, and, and I hate to call any company out. Um, it's just the business model in general. It's the same business yeah. model as like Uber, right? So when Uber yeah. started you were getting $5 rides in, you know, three series BMWs. Like, you know what I mean? Like that's how Uber started. And now you're paying the same price, sometimes more <laughs> than a taxi and getting a 20 year old car that smells like smoke and it's full of trash. You know what I mean? Like that. <laughs> it's just the business model is bad. And um, so, yeah, I've never bought into rover <laughs> at all and i feel so poor like i know some people have like found a pet sitter that was on rover and then kind of hired them privately to continue sitting for because i think and and i could be wrong about this but like you could potentially depending on how you set it up you could get different people coming into your house all the time, right? On, on Rover. And I just, I couldn't. That's actually, I just couldn't. I that's actually WAG. WAG is set up oh, to, truly okay. be like, to truly be like Uber for dog walking, where you just, you don't even meet them. They just come into your house. Because like, I've even heard horror stories about, there, there was a really good horror story on TikTok, how like they didn't tell the grandma who, and the grandma lives there. And the grandma like thought that she was breaking in. She didn't realize that she was there to just pet sit or walk the dog. And it was just, that's what drives me crazy. It's like, why would you just let anybody into your house and take care of your dog? Don't yeah. you want to meet them and, and make sure that they understand your dog that the same way you do? I know. And, and with Rover is they're teaching everybody that you can just take a bunch of dogs into your house and have it, everything be okay. And even here, to my knowledge with, with pet sitting insurance companies, you're only allowed to have 10 dogs during the day for daycare and then five dogs overnight. But here in Henderson, there was a lady that was boarding like 20 dogs at the same time all by herself. And that's just too dangerous. Wow. It is Teddy, re Teddy recently died because they, her, this lady and her husband decided to go out to dinner and then came back and saw that Teddy was dead. And it, this whole big thing where they take him to the desert and hide them, pretend like nothing ever happened. And one of my board advisors for Mindful Dog Mom, Michelle, she's on the Daggy, Doggy Task Force team. She actually found out the, the, the truth and went to the, the desert and got the body. And I just breaks my heart what she had to do to find out the truth of Teddy. That is so sad. I know, like, I I can't, personally. I um, have interviewed many, many people to pet sit for my pets. And most of them, I just was like, they, le they left it. They couldn't get out of my house quick enough. And I was like, N absolutely not. This is not happening. And, <laughs> uh, you know, a lot of people are like, you're so picky. You're so picky. Yeah, I'm picky. This is a living being that I care for and love. You know what I mean? Like there is zero chance. And then you give somebody access to your home that you don't know. That is so scary to me. Oh my gosh. But you also said 
something that was really interesting about, um, about, you said something about the lady, like it's dangerous how many animals that these people have that they're boarding, whether it's during the day or, or at night, right? Because I mean, I know with me and my husband, we currently have four cats and one dog and that's a lot. Like if an emergency were to happen and cause I think about this all the time, how in the world are we going to like, we'll, we will manage. I know we will. Cause we have traveled, like we moved with them. We drove three days with them to move, but like, I mean, it's terrifying to me. And I've already told my husband, I was like, cause you know, he's significantly older than me. And I'm like, well, when this day happens, you know, when we get to this point in time where it's just me, <laughs> cause it's going to happen. Right. Um, I know my limits now. Like when I was 20 years old, I didn't know my limits, but now I know my limits. It's like max two dogs, one cat, probably that's going to be it. Like I could not imagine if like a fire were to break out, you're not going to be able to manage t 10 dogs, let alone 20, right? Like that is super scary. Absolutely. And it's people really just think, oh, it's a dog. I can just have it in the house and scoop and serve. But taking care of dogs is more than just scoop and serve. You have to think about their behavior. They're their attitude, their just overall wellness. It's, it's not just scoop and serve. Yeah. And a lot, like, especially now after the pandemic, a lot of dogs don't get along with other dogs. Like there's, there's so much more. They're very, they have individual personalities just like humans do. So we can't just assume that all of these dogs are going to get along and Oh my goodness. That just scares me so much. I, I kind of hate hearing that, <laughs> but it's, it's so scary. So I'm so glad that there's somebody like you, at least in Las Vegas doing this. I feel like we need people all over doing what you're doing, but it certainly is a passion project, right? Like you're not getting rich off of this. So. <laughs> no, no. And I, I filed for my 501c3. I'm waiting for it to be approved. Hopefully it gets approved. And then from there I can make more of a difference. Because in the end, it, it just really comes down to keeping these pets safe from that danger that yeah. Rover puts them to you. Because Rover just lets anybody sign up like it's Facebook. Same with Blag. They just let anybody sign up like it's Facebook. They're not doing the actual in-person interview. They're not doing the background checks. They're not providing training. That's where they, they could go, right, is by hiring them still as independent contractors, but providing that training, that education, and that platform for people to make a difference. Yeah, that could do quite a bit, couldn't it? So tell me a little bit more about the like education part of what you do. Um, so basically my favorite part is just going to different local pet events and just spreading, spreading the word about how I find these professionals and why I certify them as possum. And lately I've gotten more into content creation <laughs> and learning how to do TikToks and, and turning trends into that educational aspect of, of where we can make that difference. Awesome. So did I see there's like a, um, a membership type thing you also have or did, did I mistake so that? No. So originally we were launching a $10 a month membership, um, that was part of the social club, but we decided to put that on pause right now and just focus more on the content creation. Cause a lot of people can't afford that. And I didn't, I didn't want to hide the content from anybody who can't afford it. And that's where the, the 50C3 is coming into place now to help okay. cover the expenses and spread the, the education awareness. <laughs> awesome. So the education is, is it primarily around like the, the whole learning about choosing providers for your pet? Is that like veterinarians yeah. and everything or just setters or how does that work? Well, and what's unique is all of our content is contributed and monitored by pet experts. That's how I started my board of advisors is they're the ones monitoring my content, making sure that everything is up to par and they're contributing to it as well. 
So it's not just me making up anything. It's all coming from pet professionals that actually can speak for the voiceless. Awesome. So the, um, there, there are going to be all kinds of tips then about like keeping your pet healthy, being proactive, like you were talking about earlier. Yeah. So it's, it's more about every, everything overall from safety to behavior and training, wellness and fitness and anything that is related to dog We're we're focusing on how you can make your pet's life better. That's awesome. Well, I'm so glad you're doing this, at least in Las Vegas, but then you are putting it out like, like you said, on TikTok and other places for the world to consume as well. So that's really incredible. And well, I am very, very sorry you had to go through what you went through. You know, you did make it to where you are today. Tell me about the two you have now. You have two now, right? And then are you, you have foster? Yeah, so I do foster. I do foster for the Vegas Pug Rescue. I don't have any fosters today, um, oh, okay. but I, I, do, I do enjoy fostering for the Vegas Pug Rescue. And I love, it's funny because people are like, how can you foster and see the dogs go away? And it's like, but that's the best part is seeing them find their forever home. That's, that's what makes me happy because I'm just there to, to help give them a safe space so they don't have to sit in a shelter and be sad and depressed that here they can hang out with the pugs and, and feel like they're at home until they find their forever. Yeah, so I have Lily. She is roughly 12, I think. They said that she was three when I adopted her. And then Dixon, he just turned 15 going on 16 this year. And I also, he, I was fostering him for the pug rescue and then just foster failed and decided to keep him. And, and always in my heart will be Luna Pugstable. She, literally changed my life when she came after Lily, but she's the one that truly made me the pug mom that I am today. Aww. That's awesome. And I appreciate so much the you know, the senior animals, I am, I have a house full of them as well. <laughs> my dog just turned nine. So she's like heading into like, she's just starting what they call her senior years to me. Like she doesn't seem like a senior at all. But I know, like, that's when the veterinarians are like, oh, well, she's hitting her senior year. <laughs> um, and then all of my cats are, uh, two of them are 14 and two of them are 15. So they're all getting up there. And it's 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 sad and rewarding at the same time, um, especially, like, when you have had so many pass away already. I I don't even like to think about how many I've had pass away already, but I'm older than you. So <laughs> I've had a few more. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, it is like, it's so rewarding helping them live their best life in their senior years, especially when you see so many that are kind of discarded when they get older for whatever reason, medical reasons and, and all kinds of stuff. But People are, people want the new fun puppies and it's like, no, like they're, puppies are awesome, but oh my gosh, seniors are just incredible, right? Absolutely. And there's nothing to be scared of by seniors because Lily, she's 12, but she literally acts like she's two every single day. She surprises me. And Dixon, he's going on 16, but you, other than his arthritis that causes him to limp, you still wouldn't notice a difference. I'll come home from from work even at one in the morning because I do concerts on the weekends and he'll he'll still surprise me and just say mom come chase me around the house because he's just so excited that I'm home and he'll just run around the house run around because he's just he's happy even though he's 16 he's happy he's healthy he's thriving Aww. so there's that's there's wonderful to be scared about having seniors they're just not yeah well, yeah, especially when you take care of them, right? <laughs> you actually take care of them. <laughs> I know. Well, my dog is, um, she's blonde. So it's kind of hard to see, like, you're not really going to see that white face on her. You know what I mean? Um, that you do on a lot of other dogs, but her bestie is only just turning three and they go on walks and stuff together all the time. 
and nobody thinks she like nobody I have ever met thinks she's nine, including my pet sitter. I'm constantly having to remind her (laughs) because she's like, well, she's, she's still a puppy. She's like two or three. I'm like, she's not two or three. She's, she's nine. (laughs) Um, and my, my husband, of course, he's like, she has to live forever. You have to make it to where she lives forever. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm trying my best, but it's obviously not going to happen. But <laughs> wouldn't that be awesome if they could? You never know if they'll get to 30 these days. You, that more and more dogs are surprising us. Yeah. So the... 501c3 when that comes through which should be soon yay hopefully um you'll be updating your website and people can donate and all the things yeah and and again it it all comes down to that education of filling in the gaps where veterinarians and dog trainers and whatnot can't can't fill in the gap and it's it's to help those that want to do better but don't know how yet yeah. So when you do get the um, nonprofit status, do you think you'll try to expand to other cities and have bring other people on who can do kind of what you do in other cities? Yeah. When, one day that would be nice to, to help others because for me, it's, it's a passion project for Las Vegas, but overall it really comes down to making all pet lives better, no matter where you live, where you're from. That's awesome. I hope so. I hope I hope that it can kind of spread because I think that there's definitely a need for that. I know I see constantly on social media, people are like, I'm in this area and I'm struggling to find X, whether that's a holistic vet or a border or um, even a, you know, a holistic breeder or, you know, whatever it is. And obviously I'm not like, I think there's a place for reputable, responsible breeders, but I'm, I'm definitely a pro adoption kind of person, <laughs> but, um, you know, there's a place for that. And, and, um, so finding people that you can trust, people that are responsible, people that have been vetted by somebody like you, right. Um, is there's just such in veterinarians, like trying to find a veterinarian. I called when I moved, I'm in central Texas now. I caught at least 45 veterinary offices. It was insane. The amount of footwork, really, I had to do to try to find a veterinarian who I felt like I could at least have a conversation with and wasn't being shut down, right? Like, that's hard these days. So it it, it's a lot of work. And if there's, like, an intermediary there (laughs) to help people, um, I think that that could certainly bridge a gap that would allow pets to get better care than, than what they might be currently getting. Absolutely. There, even one of my Vegas dog moms the other day reached out and was like, my vet's given up on my dog. He's eight years old. There's gotta be something more we can do. And I referred her to one of our possum professionals, Dr. Monaco, who actually also happens to be on our board of advisors and now her dog's going to vacuum picture and he's getting the treatment that he deserves. And that's, that's what I love seeing is that, that you don't have to give up yet. Yes. Yes. Oh my goodness. And here in Texas, I see that a lot, a lot. I can't tell you how many people have contacted me and they're like, my vet is like, I, if this doesn't work, we need to euthanize them. And I'm like, um, no, <laughs> like there's a whole lot more that you could be doing right now. <laughs> right? Um, so yeah, well, I'm thrilled that you're doing what you're doing in Vegas and I really, truly do hope to see it spread. But, um, so if people are in Vegas in Henderson County, probably like that, I don't know exactly what that encompasses, but, um, they can certainly find your resources and actually implement whatever they need as far as pet professionals. And then, uh, throughout the world, really, um, they can find you on Instagram, TikTok. So tell me where everybody can find you regardless of where they may live. Yeah. So my, my main Instagram and TikTok is at Vegas dog moms. 
Um, cause my at mindful dog mom is more of a personal. That's if you want to get to know me personally, you can absolutely follow at mindful dog mom on Instagram, but every, every education aspect goes through at Vegas dog moms. Cause that's everything I do. I do is for the Vegas dog moms. Awesome. And then the website is also, is that, is so that our mindful website, or Vegas? Yeah. So our website is mindful dog mom dot Vegas. Okay. And if you just specifically want to learn, learn with dog moms, then you can go to VegasDogMoms.com and it'll take you straight to our blog that has all different guides on parenting. Awesome. Well, there's a ton of education there and I hope you go check it out and I will make sure to link all of that in the show notes as well. And thank you so much for joining me, Alexa. It was so nice to meet you in person at Super Zoo and then have you on the podcast today to just kind of help spread the word. And maybe if you're out there in another city and you're like, I'm kind of starting to do this, or this is definitely a need and I have time and know how to fulfill these roles, maybe they can reach out to you um, once you get your 501c3 and and can expand on what you're doing. Yeah, I'm, I'm happy to help anybody spread the awareness that you can make pet lives better. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. And guys, from both myself and Alexa today, give your pets some extra love. Thank you so much for listening. Today's episode is brought to you by the Furry Family Coach Dog Training. Train your dog in the comfort of your own home and on your schedule with video instruction from me. Learn the foundations of training, teach basic cues to your dog, and explore solutions to behavioral issues all inside of this video-based online training course. Go to thefurryfamilycoach.com and use code PODCAST at checkout to get your first month for only $7. That's thefurryfamilycoach.com and use code PODCAST at checkout to get your first month for only $7. I can't wait to see you on the inside. Oh, oh, oh.